Hi there, I'm Java Jim with First Line Equipment. Glad you're watching this video because you're going to learn something today, a little bit more about pressure profiling with the Lily Bianca. I've been playing with this machine, the prototype right here, for 18 months, trying to break it. Can't break it. Next thing I got to do is try to throw it out the window to see if I can break this thing. But today, we're going to go over uh, one pressure profiling using the flow control of the needle valve on the top uh, or the bottom of the paddle here and how to change the pressure and the flow of the water hitting or pushing through the uh, coffee grinds to create your extraction. So for this one, we are going to do just a standard nine bar of pressure and just maintain it there because there have been some customers says, you know what, I just want the nine bar pressure because that's what my wife likes. I like to play with the machine, but she just wants the nine bar. So today we're going to show you how to do the nine bar and to increase the WAF, which is the wife acceptance factor. We're going to show you and you can show her how to do the nine bar extraction. Let's get started. So after the machine's fully warmed up, I do like to have the temperature around 203 degrees. I find a lot of uh, espresso blends do work out very well at this temperature, but whatever suits you best, that's what you're gonna program for your uh, espresso blend that you have at home or at the office or at place of business. We're using the bottomless porta filter, and I want you to comment below on what you believe. Uh, leave it loaded with the coffee while it's on the group head or empty it out. Uh, there are two schools of thought in Europe about this, and if you do comment below, I want you to give me the reasons why uh, that should be the case, if it should be remaining with the coffee or not. Uh, make sure that the portafilter is nice and hot. It's really, really important. Uh, a lot of customers call and say, hey, my espresso is cold. And basically the bottom line is because they left their warming off the group head, the portafilter. It should be on while the machine's warming up. And we've already run some hot water through it uh, just to flush it out a little bit. So now we're gonna put the paddle in the full open position and we're going to grind some. As you can see, I overdosed. I like to level out and my way of making espresso may be different than yours as folks who like to use scales. I just go with the flow. And what I'll do is I dose a little extra coffee and basically with my index finger, I'll go straight across, wipe the rim, okay and if you don't have a tamping station you can use the knock box or your counter and then i like to tamp if you look to the top rim of the tamper is level to the top rim of the basket and then a little knock and when you do it this way my fingers are making sure that it's kind of even now what that white speckle of dust is, you can comment below because I have no clue what that is. Um, so comment below and take a guess because I'm not sure. So if you look here, uh, it's pretty even all the way around. This side needs probably a little more uh, pushing down on this side and now we're even. We're going to lock the portafilter in place. I like to preheat the cups. It's good to take out four ounces of water out of your heat exchanger double boiler machine every day. Uh, maximum four ounces at a time, but uh, basically four ounces, basically just to refresh the water that's in there. Put that in the drip tray. And the machine is also, uh, I like program for a five second pre-infusion with a three second soak time. Uh, you may find something differently that works very well with your coffee. My favorite is that uh, setup. We'll lift up the lever and the shot clock is right here, which is really nice. There's the five seconds. Beautiful. We've got a little extraction there and we're right now going to about nine bar at the full open position. And we're going to hit about two ounces in 27 seconds with a ton of crema. Now, your machine may operate a little differently. 
And the reason is because the brew pressure gauge, not the pump pressure gauge, two different gauges, the brew pressure is also measuring the resistance created by the puck. That resistance is created by three things. One is the amount of coffee in a basket, which I've kept the same by leveling it, which you could do the same by also measuring it or leveling it. Number two is the tamping pressure, which I've keep the same because on this particular tamper, I push down the same way. And I call that tamping by pressure uh, or by volume actually. And then the last one, the third thing is the coffee grind finest. So if I go finer on the grind to get the nine bar, I may have to reduce the, the needle valve to allow less flow because the pressure will increase at full open. We just adjusted the grinder a little finer. And here I have a little bit of a mound, so I'm gonna just take some off. Tamp. So see my tamping is gonna be pretty much the same. My volume is the same. Little polish right there, nice and easy. And I've spoken to a lot of beginners with espresso who've gotten the Bianca and have been extremely successful with the Bianca. So now we're going to load and let me get a different shot glass. Heat preheat real quick. That's the machine refilling some fresh water into the steam boiler. Now we're going to lift up shot clock again, five seconds. Nice little drip right there. And now with the finer grind, we're almost at 11 bar. And if you want the nine bar, bring the needle valve down, paddle a little bit over, and we're at nine bar. And I took a little longer than usual, but I wanted to show you the effect. And we're at 27 seconds. The crema is amazing. The shot that I just pulled about a minute or two ago, we still got crema on top over here. So as you can see, we have nice Guinness effect. And this is how you adjust for the nine bar of pressure and let your wife know that she might have to make an adjustment. Now the Bianca is pretty much programmed to have a 11 bar of pump pressure. So you, we can go even finer and get up to close to uh, 11. Uh, the OPV, the overpressure valve will open at around 10 and a half to 11 bar. Uh, so there is some uh, maximums that you have to play with here, but the crema is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and this is the easy way for your wife or to get started on the Bianca is learning to brew at nine bar of pressure. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching how we use the Bianca to use the pressure profiling and achieve the nine bar and the impact of the grind fineness and how it impacts the pressure profiling, the needle valve, as well as the positioning of the paddle and how to adjust accordingly. We're here a few minutes into the shot and this, we still got crema here. I typically like to drink the espresso right away, but let me give it a, a little swirl here. Getting some nutty flavor in this espresso. It's actually very, very smooth. It's actually amazing. That was the second shot, that was delicious. And this one is a little bit more mild. So the first one was with the uh, little coarser grind. Uh, not, the intensity is a little lower, maybe because also it was sitting a little longer. But the creme is holding up well, the flavor profile is holding up well. But the second one actually has a little more of an, uh, a, a nutty almond flavor in this particular coffee. But I'm not gonna share what coffee we're using because that's a secret. We hope you enjoyed watching this overview. This is the first of a series of pressure profiling videos that we're gonna be doing. Uh, give us a thumbs up below, follow us on uh, our channel here because there is more to come. And as before, uh, coffee first and everything else afterwards. Thanks and have a great day.